Justin Timberlake is the only person outside of Prince and Michael Jackson that had an album that every single song could be a single. The album that I was on, oh my God, it was murder. But let's give it up for a good friend of his. Y'all don't even know what I'm gonna say. Where did I yank a bit? Stop it. Y'all don't even know who I'm gonna say. A good friend of my brother, Jimmy Fallon. Thank you so much. Thank you, please, please. Please sit down, then I can, I can read the teleprompter as well. Uh, sorry. Are you guys ready? Timberlake. His first name was Justin. And I've been asked to be inducting him. Yeah. Thank you, thank you very much. You guys, when they first asked me to help induct Justin into the Memphis Music Hall of Fame, three things came to mind. How much? Where am I staying? And most importantly, how do I get out of this? Now look, then it was like, this is Justin Timberlake. This is Justin Timberlake we're talking about. And who better to induct him than me? Mrs. Justin Timberlake. <laughs> Jessica, I'm sorry, the heart wants what it wants. And what better place to do it than here at the Cannon Center for Performing Arts? I mean, look at this place. It's gorgeous. It's huge. Or as Donald Trump would say, it's huge. It's beautiful, classy, golden seats. Luxurious acoustics, giant wall of sound. Wall, I love walls. <laughs> love building walls. <laughs> but as his friend, I can tell you that this is such a big honor for Justin, and it couldn't happen to a more deserving guy. He's given us so much amazing music over the years. I'm talking Cry Me a River. <laughs> Sexy back. Suit and tie, mirrors, dick in a box. <laughs> That's right. That's right. He was the first Justin whose dick went viral. Sorry, Bieber. <laughs> Justin's come a long way in his career from a kid in the Mickey Mouse Club to a 90s teen heartthrob who would go to a barber, point to a brick of ramen noodles and say, do this. <laughs> and now he's one of the biggest stars in the world. He can sing, he can dance, he can act, he's funny, he's good looking. And if you don't believe me, ask Justin himself, he wrote this speech. On top of all that, he's a great friend, and he's a really hard worker. I mean, in all, serious, in all seriousness, Justin works so hard at every single thing he does, whether he's recording an album, or going on tour, or just coming on The Tonight Show and doing a dumb comedy bit. He always gives it his all, 110%. He's a total perfectionist. Uh, in fact, w when we did, a, we did a thing on Saturday Night Live called the Barry Gibb Talk Show, and uh, we're <laughs> the Bee Gees. And we're wearing tuxedos and wigs, and I have a beard, and we have medallions, and we're sitting there, and, and I don't know why, but the sketch starts with our back to the audience. We have to turn in. And so we're just about to go live. It's Saturday Night Live. We're about to go live, and I'm there. And he goes, uh, hey, don't screw up the harmony. Remember that? <laughs> I go, well, we're dressed like, the, you know, a wig. And I go, yeah, OK. And he grabs my wrist, and he goes, I'm serious, man. And I just, I, I'll never forget the moment. I felt like Lance Bass. I really did, and I go, that's, much what it, that's what it's like. That's what it's like.
But the thing I admire most about Justin is how he's never forgotten where he comes from. He loves Memphis. He lives and breathes Memphis. He's got a backup band called the Tennessee Kids. His wife's last name is Beal. I talked him out of naming his son Barbecue. I, I talked him out. He didn't do it. He's part owner of the Memphis Grizzlies. Because when you think of Memphis, the first thing that comes to mind is grizzly bears. Justin's not just a part owner of the Grizzlies. He's a loyal fan. I remember we were uh, golfing one time, and he was like, uh, dude, we got to hurry up. We got to go back and watch the Grizzlies game. And I was like, chill out, man. They're going to win. <laughs> They're playing the Knicks. Please, it's very easy. But that's the kind of guy Justin is. He's passionate about his hometown. He's passionate about who he is and what he does. He's always evolving, always looking to try something new, uh, but still staying true to his roots. And that's why he's the success he is today. Justin, Memphis is proud of you. I'm proud of you. And that's why it's my honor to introduce you all to the youngest inductee and the newest member of the Memphis Music Hall of Fame, Justin Timberlake. No, 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 I'll keep the drink. Uh, sorry, I'm just going to look at it for a second. Um, tuck my shirt in. By the way, uh, Lance Bass was always on key. It was Joey Patone who had the issues. Yeah, 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 yeah. Oh, okay. I love you too. I I'm gonna sound cliche again and ask you to sit down because I actually prepared a speech for this, and I can't see the teleprompter if you don't sit down. Thank you, thank you. <laughs> this is the first time I've actually prepared a speech for anything. But this is the fucking coolest thing that has ever happened to me. Of course it's not on the prompter. I didn't write out the F word. Jimmy Fallon, you're not funny. <laughs> we just all feel sorry for you, so we... Here's what's funny about what DJ Paul said. Um, when I was 12 or 13, and is there anyone here that was born around 1981? <laughs> so then maybe you know, maybe you know, uh, about just riding around in the country just listening to Triple Six. You can come out, you can come out. I see you creeping, you can come out. Memphis music kills everybody. It's aggressive. Um, but that's Paul. Also, I'd like to thank Paul for, uh, in my dressing room here tonight, he blessed me with DJ Paul's uh, barbecue rub. Um, 
and smoked out barbecue sauce. You're the only person I know who can get away with that fall. Um, I, I want everyone to know as well that I'm gonna take my time. This, I, I'm serious, this is the coolest thing that's ever happened to me. The Grammys are political. The Emmys are political. Memphis is not political. And don't get me started on Hollywood. Okay. Look, I'm bending down. I'm gonna have a bad back, by the way. Okay. So, uh, this is really, really a surprise for me to be honored here tonight. I, uh, I felt like it was sort of unwarranted when I first looked at the list of my fellow inductees. Uh, but I've also never been one to turn down a reason to come home and spend time in the city that I grew up in and that holds such a special place in my heart. I also don't turn down free awards, so this all worked out. How much? Yeah, that's fine. All right. When people ask me where I'm from, I say Memphis. Not where do you live right now? Where are you from? This, as everyone here in this room knows, is a one-of-a-kind place. And I can say that with total sincerity because I've been all over the world three teen times. Uh, but London ain't got no Gus's fried chicken. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> Paris may rendezvous, but they ain't got no rendezvous. <laughs> Egypt has the pyramids. They don't have a Bass Pro Pyramid. I think that I think that there are some people around the world that visit us here in Memphis and then they say that Memphis has a chip on his shoulder and to those people I would have to say in the famous words of the great Isaac Hayes damn right <laughs> but see we don't call it that we call that real we call that soul and that's that soul that's in our hearts. Memphis is the global capital of soul. I'll drink to that. You can't see from there, but it says Memphis Music Hall of Fame. <laughs> and that soul it's not just in the music, it's in the people. It's greedy. And we grind here. Shout out to Marcus Saul. Shout out to Mike Conley. Shout out to Mike Conley. I, know, I don't know if y'all can see Mark. I mean, he's sitting down, but it looks like he's standing up. He's right here in the front row. Say what's up. Yeah. After we made that video. Yeah. That check looks nice, though. 
Uh, <laughs> oh, by the way, can we talk about uh, some Memphis versus Ole Miss? Sorry, where was I? I got caught up. I played golf today at Spring Creek in Collierville. And, uh, and then we stopped and watched the second half of the game. And there was a moment there where I was, uh, I was like, no. But we got a damn team, man. Okay, sorry. Sorry, um, I'm just gonna take the whole night. I'm sorry. I'm <clears throat> so, where was I? We grit here, we grind here. All heart, as uh, Tony Allen likes to say. Tony couldn't be here, he was riding on one of those things where you put your feet on and you... Um, but my favorite part about this city is we don't apologize for who we are. And, and to be honest, that is what this city has taught me to be more than anything. Now, growing up here, you, can, you can't not know about the importance of guys like Elvis, Johnny Cash, Jerry Lee, a, fel a fellow inductee tonight, Scotty Moore. The Phillips family and Sun Studios, the whole history. But when I was about 10 years old, true story. When I was a, if you didn't know the first real world, then you don't know that joke. Um, when I was about 10 years old, I realized that the great Al Green lived about 10 minutes away from me in Shelby Forest. Now, I know the Reverend. Um, what a voice. I know the Reverend is originally from Forest City, Arkansas, but, but it hit me. I was 10 years old and it hit me that if someone that big with those songs Love and happiness, let's stay together. Take me to the river with that voice. Love and happiness. You know that voice, that, that voice. No, stop it, let's not. That if he lived out in the middle of nowhere like me, and he could make it, and so could I. But, uh, but I also began to understand the soul of Memphis. I worked my way back to the songs of another, another fellow inductee and the coolest dude I've ever met, Sam Moore. Where you at, Sam? There you are. I love you, baby. Hold on. I'm coming. The songs that he sang with Dave, I learned that Al Jackson Jr. played with Booker T and the MGs. One of the first integrated bands in the world. That's important. 
and, and so many more timeless classics. Artists like uh, our great B.B. King. And I know that he is watching over us right now with that famous grin on his face. You know that grin. Miss you. Otis Redding. Sitting in the morning sun. The Stax Movement. I'm talking about Ardent Studios, which I'm pretty sure, by the way, is where I recorded my first demo when I couldn't have been more than 10 years old. So all those places, as well as Sun Studios, are special, special places in my heart. Now, there is a great Sam and Dave song called, I Thank You. And while I've already taken up the whole evening, I have a lot of people to thank tonight because I'm from here, bitch. For some, I don't know why I felt the reason to put bitch on the end of that, but it like it just felt like an exclamation point. You know what I mean, Jimmy? Every time you say something, you throw a bitch at the end, and then it. So you got. <laughs> uh, okay, you guys bear with me, okay? I'm literally about to become the weird uncle that got drunk at your wedding <laughs> and took the microphone at the reception. Hey, listen, Chris, you're a great guy. But I knew Allie when she was four, and you had a pissing problem. No, Uncle Eugene, put the mic down. That's not, you can't talk about Allie's pissing problem. That's not cool. And if you don't know what I'm talking about right now, you're the weird uncle in the room. They got drunk and blacked out, and we don't talk about it in our family. <laughs> um, first, first I wanna thank um, my beautiful, loving, and incredibly understanding of her husband's shortcomings, wife. <laughs> Jessica. Now listen, she's not from here, but she built like she is. Every Southern boy, can I get a hell yeah? Y'all know how we like them. I don't like them bony girls. We eat down here with a S at the end. We eat. <laughs> no, no, seriously, she is, she is a rock. And she, and, uh, and she is tough as nails, so she's basically a Memphian. <laughs> <clears throat> Baby, I love you uh, more than I can put into words or more than any song I could ever write. We actually just celebrated our third year anniversary, so. Which in Hollywood years, that's like a 15 year anniversary, so good on you, girl. I didn't drive you too crazy yet. Uh, my best friend is here tonight. He drove in from Nashville, Trace. Um, he may not look like it, but he used to listen to Three Six Mafia too. Paul, you can't be, keep creeping on my shoulder like that. You know what we do in Memphis? I throw a bow and I'll. Me, me and Trace used to go to the Skewer Restaurant on Sunset Boulevard in Los Angeles. That's my 
Can't wait for 3-6 to get nominated. Uh, Memphis. Inducted. No, sorry. no, go ahead, go ahead. We got nominated two years ago. We good. <laughs> okay. This is a beautiful man right here. And he represents Memphis like nobody else. Thank you, man. That was weird. Um, so where was I? My best friend, Trace. We, we've been all over the world together and we wear this city like an S on our chest. And I gotta say, 99.9% .9 of my greatest times here has been with you. Uh, you've always been there for me and you've always reminded me that I could make anything happen, even when I doubted myself. And I know you're standing up here in a Tom Ford tuxedo, it looks like you don't doubt yourself, but that shit happens. I remember the Commercial Appeal gave me some review one time, and I was like, I'm from here. Um, I won't say what album it was for, but you know who you were. Man, that felt good. <laughs> to my grandparents, I hope they get to see this. Not the parts where I was cursing, but this part. Like, so if you just Instagram like a short part of this part. Um, <laughs> to my grandparents, um, they were basically my original entourage. You know? They were at every local talent show, every rec hall, every parking lot, every school function where I would sing. They were even at the airports at the Memphis International Airport. <laughs> Don't forget to get your uh, boarding passes on time. Sorry. They were even at the Memphis International Airport to greet me at the gates back when you could greet people at the gates. And if you weren't born in 1981 or before, then you don't know what I'm talking about. So to my grandparents, I love you very much. I'm, I'm, I, I really don't feel bad about taking up this much time. I just want to be clear about that. Um, uh, to Renee Ernest. Now, most of you may not know Renee, but if you met her, you wouldn't forget it. She was my third grade advanced studies teacher. I was super smart, guys. I don't know how you can say that about yourself when you're in third grade. Um, but she was my advanced uh, studies teacher in third grade. And she actually, and this is so Memphis, she became a road manager for me. And I got to say, Renee, you were like having Memphis with me every day on the road. And I thank you for everything. When I moved down to Orlando to start the group, she was a big part of that. Seriously, she was Uber before Uber. It was a little bit of underage drinking, which is, I'm not proud of that. Um, all right. To my father, Randy whose singing voice was the first I ever heard in Memphis or the world. You know, uh, people around here still tell me that I sound like you. And that review means more to me than anything. And I know that, I know that my travels, because 
who gets a job when they're 10. I know that my travels haven't allowed me to see you as much as I would like to, but you are always with me every day. It's got sentimental. Uh, to my stepfather, Paul, uh, when I left town to get my start in Florida, you made the effort to leave this great town. You're out of your mind, but you made, you made the effort to leave this great town every weekend so you and my mom and I could spend time together as a family. And this is just, for you guys, this is just one example. I mean, he would, he would fly in on, uh, you know, the late flight on Friday to Orlando, and he would leave on the late flight on Sunday and go back to First Tennessee Bank, back when it was First Tennessee Bank. And if you weren't born before 1981, then you don't know that. Um, to make sure that we spent time together. And uh, you know, it's just, a, it's just an example of one of the many, many sacrifices that you made that, so that I could live out my dreams. And I will never forget that. And you are, you are as much responsible for me being here right now, accepting this unbelievable award as I am. So I thank you. So last and most importantly, Mama. I gotta take a swig of this 901 before I start. My mother, Lynn, Janet Lynn. The woman who more than anyone truly defines Memphis. You instilled in me the same important values that this city has. A deep understanding of soul. The importance of always keeping things real. And when push comes to shove, to never take no shit from nobody. Especially anybody not from Memphis. I love you, Mom. Standing here tonight, I'm reminded of a lyric from my favorite Chuck Berry song. Where's Keith? Where is Keith? You know Chuck, right? Chuck Berry. Yeah. No, no, no. No, no, no. I was just asking if you knew him. Please don't beat me up. That'll be very embarrassing. All right. Chuck Berry had one of my favorite songs that he did. It was called Back to Memphis, in which Chuck sings, Son, come back to Memphis and live here with your mama. You can walk down Bill Street, honey, wearing your pajamas. You know, home folks here, we let do just what we want to do. Now, Memphis, I may have already drank enough this evening that the suit you see me in right now might actually end up becoming my pajamas. But hey, there's plenty of ways to end up on the front page of the commercial appeal. Thank you. Now Chuck Berry didn't come from Memphis, but again, when people ask me, I couldn't be more proud to say that I do. I want to thank all the great artists in this hall. I may get emotional right now. Um, I want to thank all the great artists in this hall. I am truly honored to merely stand on the shoulders of all these legends that I grew up listening to, that I grew up admiring to say that I stand alongside them now.
We gotta fix that uh, wind, Beyonce wind fan that's getting my eyes. Uh, Memphis, the city, the greatest city in the world, and the Memphis Music Hall of Fame, you have given me and my family, who is clearly half of this section, one of the great, the, not one of the greatest honors this evening and made us all very proud. And I only hope that I can continue to return the favor for as long as I live and breathe. But not tonight, I'm drinking. If you got a drink, put it in the air. Because this is what we do here. I love you so much. Thank you so much. Thank you, Jimmy, Paul, Mike. Unbelievable. I'm, uh, thank you so much.